I've never had someone get on the phone with me, but you know, I really hate my wrists. <laughs> like, I really want to cover them, right? Like, yes, everyone loves different parts of their body, but there's places and areas of consideration. And it's like, some of us want to cover our legs and some of us want to cover our stomachs. My dear- the feeling that we have, it doesn't matter what part of our body, we all have that feeling, right? That's what makes it this general problem is that we all feel this level of not being confident around something on our front. What's up, Style Nation? Welcome back to the Styled for Life podcast. It's your girl, Katie. And today's episode is not juicy, it's spicy. Whew. This one today, you're either going to love me or hate me, and I'm probably going to lose some friends. Ah, I can't wait. This is something that's been so heavy on my heart, and I can't wait to just share it with you guys. But before we dive in, welcome to the show. I'm super excited that you're here. You know how much I love podcasting, and it's May. Can you believe it? Like, I know it sounds so fucking dumb and cliche. <laughs> and I know when people say that, you're like, yeah, I know. But holy fuck, I just can't believe that time is going by so quick. And I just feel like, like, I know, again, another cliche, the older you get, the quicker it goes. But this episode is dropping May 1st. My baby child, my baby, is going to be double digits this month. It's funny, like, you have kids and, like, you, you have these identities, right? You're like, oh, I'm a mom of kids. I'm not even just a mom of like little kids anymore. Like I'm a mom of full-blown fucking teenager and a preteen. Like what? All my kids are double digits. Like I officially don't have babies. So thank you for letting me share as we enter into May. Um, And my favorite season that's coming up, Gemini season. Shout out to you guys. I know it's Taurus season. I'm very well aware of that. Um, But I'm always excited because this just enters into my favorite time of year because Gemini season leads into the summer. And I love the summer. So since it's May and I used to do this thing where I would do like a monthly roundup, I do want to start today's episode with a story. Before I get into the space (laughs) that is, you're like, God, Katie, like, tell me what the fuck the whole episode is going to be about. I will. So I have to tell you this story first, right? So 2019, before I start my podcast, (laughs) it was actually May. Funny. I didn't even think about that before I hit record. And we were going to put our house in the market, right? So May 2019, a year before the pandemic, I was being asked to relocate for my job and real estate agents in my house were about to put our house on the market and I just walk into the hallway and I just got like have you ever gotten this like overwhelming sense of a feeling or like you just know something all of a sudden it's only happened a couple times in my life but I got this feeling of just like knowing and it was like don't move and I was like okay fine I won't move now we have been looking for houses for like months and like just nothing was like coming up and I'm looking for houses never easy right but like nothing was coming up and then we also have to sell our house which is also not easy and I just had this feeling of don't move and at first I was like is this just me being scared or what but I was like I felt so sure in that feeling well I'm super glad I didn't obviously right because I started this podcast in uh, November of 2019, and then the pandemic hit. I'm like, thank God (laughs) I didn't move because fast forward, you know the story, I lost my job, right? The same job that I was going to relocate for. And here we are with Styled for Life podcast and the Katie Just Style business, and we're living our best lives, our scariest, (laughs) most emotional roller coaster, best lives. But I have to share this story with you because I felt that feeling and I had never felt it so sure. But I had that feeling happen since our last podcast together. And I wanted to share it with you since it officially today episode drops on May 1st and I just love this time of year. And like I said, my baby's transitioning into double digits and it just feels like I'm entering into a whole new phase of my business with the style squad that I just launched in February. Like things are just shifting and moving really fast. And I was walking out of the bathroom and you guys know, started this podcast in 2019. And if you've been listening for any amount of time, 
thank you. And if you're new, thank you. But I say this to you over and over again. I love podcasting. I love podcasts and I love podcasting because your podcasts, people that you listen to are like your BFFs, right? Like you really have to connect to them. And even though it's technically quote unquote a one-sided conversation, it's not, right? Like when I know how I feel about my favorite podcasters, like they're part of the family, like pull up a seat at the table, right? Like you're having dinner with me and my folks, like this is what we do, right? So I walk out of the bathroom the other day since last time we talked and I just had that same like, you know, heavens parting, the sea, like opening moment. And it was, I want to have the biggest, most downloaded podcast around style and fashion. That is what I want. And I have never felt so excited. I haven't felt this excited probably since that day I decided not to move in 2019. Well, actually, the day I actually launched this podcast, I don't think I've felt that level of excited and that level of clarity. Now, when I say that, what does that mean? To me, that means I want to have the most number one downloaded podcast about style and fashion because I want to change the way that people think about it. I think that fashion and beauty has been weaponized and we have made people choose between you can be pretty or you can be smart. If you care about what you look like, then you're shallow. But we all know that that's not true because we all care what we look like and we all judge people on their appearances. So why do we keep vilifying this and why don't we just like call it what it is And why don't we use it as the medicine that it is to really understand who we are and stop putting so many fucking labels on it. Stop making it so intimidating and use style and beauty and fashion for what it truly is, which is a self-expression, which is the journey of uncovering who we really are. What, What is wrong with that, right? I really want to break down what it means what the like why like why do we have these beliefs why do we continue to put ourselves in these boxes right like why do we keep telling and i have to say like i feel like it's especially geared at women right why do we feel like we have to like oh can't be her friend because of xyz or can't be her friend because she wants to dress too sexy or can't be her friend because she likes bright lipstick can't do this or she must think like that or blah 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 right like we all do it but let's be aware that we're doing it and then challenge our beliefs. And this comes up all the time with clients, right? All the time. And I love this. I heard this on another podcast. Someone said the most, your most personal problems are the most general problems, right? Like I could sit here and I could say, I can guess what everyone's body part is that they hate because <laughs> they're generally the same. <laughs> I've never had someone get on the phone with me, but you know, I really hate my wrists. <laughs> like I really want to cover them, right? Like Yes, everyone loves different parts of their body, but there's places and areas of consideration and no, and it doesn't even matter what, like some of us want to cover our legs and some of us want to cover our stomachs, but the truth behind it is the feeling that we have. It doesn't matter what part of our body, we all have that feeling, right? That's what makes it this general problem is that we all feel this level of not being confident around something on our body. And I really love the psychology behind fashion because you can start to pick apart what those things are and ask yourself, why? What does that mean? Why do I think that red lipstick means this? Who told me that? And is that my belief or is that someone else's belief? And I think when you start doing that with clothes and fashion and beauty, then you can start applying it to other areas of your life. And one of the big misconceptions is that if someone is pretty or beautiful or insert whatever word you like there, that they can't have any depth. Or if someone's vain and cares about, I don't even like the word vain, but if someone cares about what they look like, that they can't have any depth. And I would like to go on the record and say, I give lots of fucks about what I look like. Personal appearance obviously is very important to me to me as a person, not what other people think about me, but when I see myself and I can go deeper than the fucking ocean. 
(laughs) okay? So you can be both. And that's what I really want fashion and beauty to be. I want it to stop being like a box that we put ourselves in that we think we belong in or that we don't belong in. And I want us to use it what it's really for, which is medicine, right? I want you to use it to create unshakable fucking confidence. Because you know how you hold a boundary? With confidence. You know how you take action in your life? With confidence. You know how you create new habits? With confidence. You know how you let go of shitty habits? With confidence, right? It all starts with confidence, just a fucking shred of confidence in yourself. And If your mean girl voice is on 10 all day, every day, and you're constantly getting dressed for other people and not yourself, then you're giving your power away all the time. And then those other things that you're constantly going after are going to be so much harder to obtain. Ah, Thanks for holding the space for me to share that. But that was something that just really came to me. I was like, I want to have this podcast challenge the way we think about the fashion industry, the beauty industry, what personal style is. I love all that shit. And I've been hiding behind it for so long. And you know what's funny to me is people say to me all the time, I don't care about what trends are. I don't want to know what trends are. Do you know what my most downloaded podcast episodes to date are? The ones where I talk about trends and what what's going on in fashion. You know why? Because you do want to know. We all want to know because as humans, just like your brain is hardwired to keep you safe, and that shit's annoying as fuck, I know. (laughs) One of the things around safety is strength in numbers. It's a cliche because it's real. Strength in numbers. And when we feel like we don't belong in our society, then we feel unsafe. And that's what I think the beauty of fashion is. And plus, you can't extrapolate fashion from politics, from social, what's going on in the world, you can't. And we've all seen this. We've all lived through this. Like if you thought that you could, you know for a fact that you can't now because you saw how fashion was impacted when we all had to stay in the house and how everything that's going on in the world, all of the social issues, political, whatever, how it shows up in fashion. And fashion is art. And it's a direct reflection of what's going on in the world. That's why I love it. And that's why I think it's the medicine, right? It's the culture. It's who we are. Like people dress a certain way. And this is why we judge people based on what they wear, because they dress a certain way based on their hobbies, their cultures, the groups that they're listening to, the music that they listen to, right? Like in the 90s, if I walked in with gold chains and baggy pants and Nikes on, and I said I listened to hip hop, you wouldn't be surprised. And that was exactly what the fuck I was doing, (laughs) right? And then if I walked in with my Jankos on and a button down um, jacket, goddamn the word, just jacket style, and I said I listened to 90s grunge and like Green Day, you would have totally been like, yep, makes sense, right? Because we're constantly looking for these patterns in our life. Long way of saying... I really want to change the way that we see this, and I want it to be the most fucking empowering part of your day, because you do have to get dressed every day. So don't let it own you. You own it. You get to control the narrative to yourself. You get to boost your mood for yourself. You get to get dressed for yourself. You put that lipstick on for yourself and your goals. All right. Now that we're like 13 minutes in, not that I'm like looking at the timer of this or anything, Let's talk about today's real episode. Today's episode is a continuation of our fashion foundation conversation. So two episodes back, I told you guys what the four pillars of your fashion foundation were, right? Understanding your style archetype, ding, 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 that goes back to that confidence conversation. What is your lifestyle and do you have the clothes that support your lifestyle, We're going to get into that because as we head into summer, I think this is a big one. Now, I'm a beach girl, right? I love going to the beach. I don't actually have a beach body. Well, anybody is a beach body, right? But there's a lot of mental gymnastics around that. So we're going to continue that conversation around lifestyle coming up soon. Last week, though, we talked about um, body shape. That was pillar number three. So you have your understanding your archetype, like what is your personal style? How do you create it? What is your lifestyle? What are you want to be doing that you aren't doing because you don't know what to wear? What's your body shape? 
That was last episode. So two episodes ago was the four pillars, going over what they were, deep dive into the archetype and the archetype quiz. If you want to figure out your archetype, I will tag all that in the show notes. Last episode was around body shape. Now, I talked about dresses because I'm getting a lot of requests for special event styling, weddings that are coming up and things like that. So if you need help in that area, hit me up. I actually, I can't even talk. I absolutely love special event styling because it's your opportunity to have like this fling with fashion to really kind of understand what you do and do not like. So hit me up if you have a special event photo shoot or vacation coming up. But If you just want to tune into the podcast, listen to last week's. It's on body shape. I talk about three dress silhouettes that work for any body type. And then I just talk about style elements. So they don't necessarily have to be dresses. They could be jumpsuits. They could be suits. They could be tops. So definitely, and how to determine your body shape and my viewpoint on that. So tune into that. So that leaves us with last but not least, but your color palette. And this is where I said I'm going to lose some friends over this one because fuck your color palette. Ugh, I have so much beef with color seasons <laughs> and color palettes. And I can see people cringing in my mind right now as I tell you this. You've heard of color seasons, right? Like, I'm a spring, I'm a summer, I'm a fall, I'm a uh, winter, right? They hold an amazing space and they do work. I'm not saying that people don't look good in certain colors because they do. They do. We know it's true. But it doesn't always work because what your color palette doesn't account for is your personality. Your color palette only reflects your physical body. And this shows up in my business constantly and myself. And there's so many nuances to this. So I don't know about you, but of course, my Instagram feed is curated with some of the most amazing stylists that I know, um, that I love, respect, think they're amazing. And I'm not knocking anyone who does color analysis. I do them. I have just started doing them in a different way. I was taught, I have actually trained with three different people on color. Because the first way I was trained was very traditional. It was like, here's the color season. Either you're spring and you're warm and you're bright or you're light and you're summer and you're cool. And I'm actually going to go through these with you to tell you. And there's some truth in this. Some people are hard, cool, hard. (laughs) Oh, my God. I can't even talk. Are hardcore cool, right? Like, that's me. I look amazing in cool colors. Every now and then, I also look good in warm colors. And we'll talk about that. So I was trained on that, and I always had a problem with that because there's some people that are really hard to put in a box. And also, it's really, I want to say, like, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. What one person sees, someone else doesn't see, right? And it's almost like a computer screen. Everyone's computer screen is dialed in slightly different. And how I might look and see colors, you might not see them exactly the same way as I do, right? Like, Tone deaf, color deaf, like different people see different colors, right? We know that for a fact. Um, Because colorblind doesn't mean that you just don't see colors. It could just mean that you don't see the saturation the same way as some people do. So I really have a hard time putting people in those boxes. And I think it's another thing in fashion and beauty that makes it fucking intimidating. Because people will say, I don't know, does this color look good on me? Well, my first thought is, if you like it, wear it, right? And then we can style around it. And I talked about this a lot on the body shape too, right? Like, we get really stuck on, is this good for my body type? Some That shit's trial and error, right? Because you don't know. Because, like, I'm 5'4", but I have really short legs. 5'4 isn't considered petite, but I have short legs. So I have to constantly be on the lookout for that, right? But if someone just says, here's the framework, if you're 5'2 and under, you're considered petite, then I'd be struggling my, this whole time of my life, like, oh, well, what about this long torso that I have and these really short legs? And then, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like, everyone's body is really, really different, and it's really, really important to know it. So I hate to tell you, fuck your color palette. You don't want to hear this because we want things to fit in boxes because when things fit in boxes, we don't have to think about them. I am public enemy number one. I want someone to tell me what to do. 
because I don't want to think about what to do all the time because I have so many things I want to think about. But that's also because we haven't been taught to relish in freedom. We've been taught to put other people's opinions above our opinions and like don't change your mind and you know you always owe other people other things so like for me to get on here and say fuck your color palette and you can wear whatever the fuck you want you're probably like whoa now I have too many choices right now your decision overwhelm and yes there's an art to this and yes certain colors do look better and you guys know that I know that and I love that but I also believe in the psychology behind colors certain colors exude different moods for people so you might have a light muted color palette but you love fucking bright red then wear it because what does it do for you does it ignite a piece of you does it bring out your j-lo fire then wear it is it your heat then wear it i'm never going to be the stylist to say well you can't wear that because it's not in your summer um color palette and you should really stick with these those are more for bright winners it's one of the biggest ands in life and if you don't like ands i'm sorry because life is nothing but a big fucking and and let me give you an example of what i'm talking about for all my moms who are listening you love your kids. You love your kids to death. And you need them to back the fuck up sometimes, right? Like, I just need you to give me five minutes. Just need a little bit of personal space. And every time that kid backs up for five minutes, your heart is like, oh, God, but I love you so much. No, I didn't mean it. Like, get back in my face. And it's this constant dance of and. That's what mom guilt is, right? Have you experienced that before? That's just what guilt is, period, right? Right? You experience that all the time. Life is nothing but a long series of ands. You can have two opposing feelings about the same situation all the time. And that's how I feel about color. So do you want to walk through the color palette in case this really resonates with you? I do want to drop what I have on it. I do want to talk about why some of the things you got to look out for and why it's not just cookie cutter. And then I want to talk about personality, right? So like I was starting to say, I have trained with people who were like, this is how you do it. And I hate to like be Wizard of Oz and pulling the curtain back, but I'm in groups with amazing, amazing women that inspire the living fuck out of me every day. And I have seen professionals argue over what people's colors are. And that's when I started to like notice that you can't just put people in a box and everyone's going to have their own perception because perception is reality of what they think someone is. And at the end of the day, it's what makes people feel good is all I give a fuck about. And I want to say, yes, I have clients who have leaned into this and it's changed their whole lives, right? Like I have a client who used to always wear black and navy and it just washed her out. And then she did look a lot better in cooler, lighter colors. And she just glows, right? It's like my daughter. She looks amazing. And like baby pink and baby blue, ice blue, all the icy pastels looks amazing in them. She also looks great in red too because she's got a big ass personality that can support that. And, and my son's a really good example. He's got these really bright eyes, right? Really bright eyes. So while his hair and his skin are almost the same color, which would be considered muted in the color palette, he has these really bright eyes. So he can also pull off really bright colors because it accentuates his eyes. So there's all these different facets of our body. And sometimes they don't all match. Sometimes your skin can be cool and then you go dye your hair and it has a warm undertone to it. Now you're playing with both tones, right? And oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> but there's so many reasons why. So that was one way to um, do colors. Then I was taught that we have palettes and personalities. And then one of my last teachers that I really, really vibed with was like, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, you wear what makes you feel good. And I was like, amen, sister. So real quick, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but I do want to kind of give you this framework. And you can Google this and you can go on Pinterest and you can find this and you probably follow another stylist or another influencer that talks about color as well. Again, this is my Katie Ellen Style Nation take on this. 
So let's dive in. So you think of the seasons of the year, right? And imagine them going in a circle. And I wish I was videotaping this and you could see my hands right now. So we're moving in a circle and we're going to start with spring because we're in spring right now. So we're in spring. So spring is warm. So if people have called you a spring, they usually have a warm skin tone, right? So oranges and yellows and gold jewelry tend to look really, really good on you. And one trick, and honestly, I don't know if there's any truth to this, <laughs> your veins might appear more green than blue or purple, right? And you you may or may not have an olive skin tone, or you might have really light features, but you just have this warm warmth to you. So warm is your undertone, and then your features are bright or light, right? So... I'm trying to think of some celebrities, uh, like Taylor Swift is a spring, right? But she also looks really good in red lipstick, and that's usually a winter color. But you know why that works is, and this is why I say fuck your color palette, because what comes right before spring is winter. And as we transition from one season to the next, are there or are there not days where you're like, okay, is it spring or is it winter, right? There's like these weeks in there, and we're having it right now in Virginia. Like it was really warm last week, now it's in the 50s. And there's always this crossover, right? Because one season blends into the next season. So what you'll find a lot of times with seasons is that when you might be a spring, you can pick colors on both sides of you, right? So you can pull colors from your winter sisters that are right before you, and you can pull colors from your summer sisters that are right after you, right? So that's why I say like, fuck your color palette. It gets pretty tricky and just trust your personality, So that's what spring is. So we move into our summers. So summers are cool, cool tones, right? You look really good in like a blue red. You look really good in blues and purples and greens. Um, Silver jewelry really pops on you. And your features would be considered light or muted. So like when I was talking about my son, his skin and his hair are almost the same sandy color, right? So at first glance, it's very muted. Nothing pops because there's no big contrast between the two. So um, I was thinking about this last night, and I think who's a really good representation of that cool summer, and I'm going to show my age here a little bit, ladies, but do you remember Vanessa Williams? I think she was married to like Grant Hill for a little bit in the 90s, Um, amazing singer. She would be someone who would have that summer, cool, muted, light features. And Kate Middleton is actually another really, really good example now that I'm thinking about it right? That kind of like muted, nothing about her like really pops. Cool. She looks great in cool colors. All right. So now we're in summer. Now we move into fall. So fall, we're getting back to warm. And remember I said you can pull from the season before or after you because now fall carries that warm muted from summer as we transition to the muted. Think of like it's been washed with the sun right? So it's like sun baked, very muted, right? And so that's the beginning part of fall. So you can be warm and you can, so you have a warm tone instead of a cold tone, but you have that like muted sun baked look to you. Um, This is also where I say like Beyonce, some people say she's a spring, some people say she's a fall, right? So this warm muted look to you, I think I'm gonna have to say fall because when I think of warm and muted, baked in the sun (laughs) like I think of Beyonce just like gorgeous right but I bet if she dyed her hair and she moved away from the blonde that she's so known for that's made her an icon it would start to shift right and then the other thing for fall is like when you get deep in fall you get those dark rich tones so you have that warmth and that those dark rich tones so my guess is like if you take someone like Beyonce and then she dyed her hair just brown like a really pretty chestnut brown, she'd be more of a dark autumn instead of a muted autumn, right? So spring, summer, fall. Now fall transitions into winter. Now winters, I think, are one of, and I guess this could be applied to any of these color seasons. When I say fuck your color palette, some people that have really strong, really strong identifiers, their color palette does so much for them, right? So like, my um styling partner in crime, Jenny, 
She is a bright winter, right? She has these really pretty piercing blue eyes and she has gray hair. Now, if you put her in warm, drab colors, like they're just not going to look good on her, period, right? No matter how much she likes them. Now, she does like some of those neutral prints, but she knows that she needs to pair them with pops of winter colors because those are your brights and your cools. And she really needs that to really feel like her full self based on her intense eye color and color palette, right? So I'm going to give you some examples of winters that can really um, help you see this through. Think of like Courtney Cox, Megan Fox. They have really dark hair and really bright piercing eyes, right? If we put them in something too monotone, they will look really washed out, but they look really, really good with pops of color that pop off their eyes, right? Lucy Liu is another one. Uh, Lapita is another one. They have these really intense features and brightness. Like it's almost like they're Enter the room, their essence enters the room before they do. So people are like that. Yes, this is where I say your color palette does and doesn't work. But if Lucy Lou came to me and she said, I don't give a fuck. I want to wear a terracotta from head to toe. I'd say, okay, how are we going to do this? And then we would make sure that she had on a lipstick or an accessory or something to complement her brightness and her features, right? All right. So that's how the color seasons work in general. Now, I've touched on this a little bit on the things you got to be aware of that are really nuanced, right? One blends into the other. So you can pick from both, right? I think the fall, the summer is a really good one when you think of like when you're transitioning from summer to fall and you and you come out and you have that like, I just think of like Arizona, right? And that's another really good example is where we live, right? But when I think of Arizona, I think of like the Red Rocks and like it all has this like desert color palette. And, you know, that can be paired with the rich browns and it looks really good, but they're two different color palettes, right? And just mentioning that our environments play a big role and the colors that we're attracted to. Our cultures play a really big role in the colors that we're attracted to. Our personalities obviously play a super big role in what we're attracted to, right? And you like take someone like Beyonce, and I'm gonna keep using her because she's queen, um, or even J Lo, right? Like I bet um, if I had to guess, I'd probably put J Lo in that warm, muted color palette. She's probably another autumn. But, okay, that girl is definitely going to look so good in her bright lipstick, right? Because that's her personality. That's her heat. So you can't ever discount those things. And then, like I said, is like if you dye your hair, it shifts your hair color. When I dye my hair pink, like all of a sudden, like different lipsticks looked good and didn't look good. Um, our thin, our blah, Our skin thins as we get older. And then a lot of times people have said that you start to cool down as you get older, right? And you think of like old ladies and they all have blue hair, right? It's kind of like that. So there's just all these different things. Or like you can have really cool eyes, but then like I said, you dye your hair and now it's warm. Or you have cool eyes, but you could have a warm undertone. Like there's all these ways to move around it. So I really want to say... Fuck your color palette. Like, you don't need to put yourself in a box. You don't need to stress out. You don't need to be like, oh, my God, which one? Like, you know, look at it and think about what looks good for you. Innately, most people know what looks good on them. They just don't slow down long enough to receive it. You know what looks good on you. You just have to pause and you just have to say, like, this looks good on me. I'm attracted to it. I like it. Like, if you looked at your closet, I bet you'd start to see some patterns, right? Or go on Pinterest. Like I told you guys all the time, go on Pinterest, save some boards. I bet you'll start to see some colors repeat. And those are the colors either that you like, so they look good on you, or they're the ones that just naturally look good on you, right? There's so many layers to this, and there's so much depth that we can get into this with, like, our neutrals and our contrast and our scale, and all these things are inherent to our body. But I really just wanted to open up the permission, to tell you to fuck your color palette. (laughs) If there's a color that you're attracted to or you're going to happen to some of the personality, I put some notes around how I see the personalities that I really want to get into. If you aren't attracted to a color, just wear it. Okay, I'm going to give you an example for myself here in a second. 
on how to think about this. Um, but just remember, the further you get away from your face, the less it matters as well. Because our face is where all of our inherent colors come from, right? And our inherent colors are the color of our hairs, our hairs, our hair, our lips, our eyes, and our skin. So then the further we get away from our face, the less it matters, right? Because once you get below my waist, unless you have a really trained eye, which means we probably ain't even hanging out, then you're not really going to really pick up on those colors. Now, this being said, just this week I ordered a shirt that I hate because of the color. I ordered it because it was a v-neck. I have the white version of it. And I was like, let me just try this pale pink. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. We all do it. And I'm sharing that because we all do it because I got caught up in a moment of liking it on other people. And I was like, this is gross. And yes, I could pair it with one of my bright pink blazers or something like that. And it would look great. But honestly, I don't like the fabric either. So it's like it's a total no for me. But that's a little different um, because if you don't like the fabric or something just doesn't lay properly, don't try to make it work. Just let it go. Right. So give you examples. So I know I have really cool skin and cool colors look amazing on me. Bright colors look, I think, look good on me. And I think that's mostly to do with my personality because I think I have a bigger personality. Now, if someone typed me, I think they would just say it was a true winter. But I think I have a brightness to my personality and intense drama <laughs> that I like to pull on. So I think the brights look really good on me. And one of my favorite sweaters is this bright orange red sweater that I own. And like I said, spring is winter sister, right? We move from winter into spring. And that's definitely one of the colors from the bright spring palette. So I know that I can pick those colors from my deep winter um, brights into my spring brights. And that the brightness is what I'm attracted to. So that's what I pull on the most. So think about what you're attracted to. Are you attracted to the muted terracotta sunbaked tones? then those are the tones you're attracted to. Are you attracted to the depth of the autumn, like jewel tone tones? Then that's what you're attracted to. And let it be that simple. Just let it be that simple. Now, this is my favorite part. And this is where I was training with one of my teachers and we went through the color palette. And it's so funny that I'm doing this because I have this amazing <laughs> color system that I invested thousands of dollars in. And I love... um the presentations and the way that on how to use the color palette and how to match our colors. But I don't want anyone to ever think that they have to be stuck in a box, right? That's what this number one most downloaded Style for Life podcast is here to teach you, is to inspire you, is that you spent your whole life creating boxes to fit into. And if you weren't creating a box to fit into, you were checking a box that someone else had created for you. Don't let fashion, beauty, and style be that for you. This is the one thing that you get to own. And then once you own it inherently, you don't give a fuck about the standards because you're making your own standard, right? Like, don't let it be status quo. You create the status quo. With that being said, let's move into seasonal personalities. So we talked a little bit about the seasons, right? And what they move into. And the seasonal personalities really do tie to the energy. So if there's an energy of a different season that you're attracted to, then also you can choose colors from those palettes, right? So say if you're one of the like fall muted Beyonce's, right? And you're like, but I'm really attracted to spring energy, right? Like I'm really attracted. And I think this is why so many people get stuck on trying to color type Beyonce because she transcends, baby. But she has this fucking super magnetic energy of like a sp- of a spring, right? So there's like this constant back and forth. I honestly think it just depends on the tone of her hair. So... If you really peg yourself as someone who has playful, energetic energy, you might like some of the spring colors. Like I was giving you that example about my red orange sweater. I love my winter palette, but I also have a huge part of me that loves playful energy. And I'm a very energetic person by nature. Like, I just know that. Like, I have to do something in the day to work off that energy or it is saying they ain't good for nobody. (laughs) Okay? So I love pulling from that color palette as well. Or you might have a summer personality and you're a winter 
right? So summer personalities are more graceful and relaxed, chilling on the beach. Think of like the activities that we do during these seasons, right? So you might like that color palette more because it matches your personality, even though you have coloring from a different season. And then in fall, you might have more of a fall personality, like you're a really grounded person, you're outwardly determined. This really resonates with me right now because like it's tourist season, right? Like the bull isn't tourisable. <laughs> you have this like grounded energy, this earth energy, and like you're really connected to that. And you might really like those earth tone colors and like jewel tones, right? Like they're natural emeralds and rubies. They're natural things from our earth. And you might really connect with those colors. Or you might be like myself. And you might have a really big winter personality, which is intense and dramatic. And I always tell people, and I tell my clients this all the time, and I always think about when it snows and then the sun comes out and how it's so fucking blinding you can't see, right? When I think of winter, I think of that. And I think about those really stark um, features that some of the winter ladies have, like the piercing blue eyes and the really dark hair and things like that. Like it's so like shocking almost to your system in an amazing way and like that's the personality and I feel like I live in between those spaces between the winter and the spring right really intense really dramatic and super playful and energetic at the same time those are two different tones right one's cool and one's warm but this is where you get to play with it you get to mix and match based on your personality not just on what feels good for you so like I said Fuck that color palette. Get off that box. Spray paint that box. Bedazzle that box. Cut that box. Do whatever you need to do. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode on your color palette and why you don't need to stress out about it. If you like it, you like it. You don't need a reason why. Put it on. Send a picture. DM me, tag me on Insta, hashtag fuck your color palette. Don't do that because my friends are really going to hate me. (laughs) But who cares? This is, I just think this is how we should approach it. Um, We should break free the status quo. We should stop really worrying about what everyone else thinks and use this as a way to trigger hunt, right? Hunt those triggers. Ask yourself, why would something like this trigger you? Why does this make me feel a certain way? And I think color is an amazing one because I get that all the time. I'm scared of color. Well, ask yourself why. And then don't forget also like every season, different colors come out and you might be really attracted. Like the key lime pie color that's really um, fun this spring. Like you might be really attracted to that and it doesn't quote unquote fall into your color palette. You know, don't be imprisoned by your colors. Wear whatever you want. All right, lady, if you enjoyed today's episode, share it with one other friend so we can make this the number one most downloaded episode, I mean, podcast on fashion and style so we can break apart the status quo of beauty standards so that women can go forth and be amazing. I'm super grateful for you guys. Share it on Insta. Tag me. Let me know what you liked about today, what you didn't like. What do you want me to cover in the future? If you haven't already downloaded your style quiz archetype, do that and tell me what you get. Tell me what you get. Let me know what resonated with you today. I will tag all of these resources in the show notes. I will tag the other episodes if you haven't listened to those yet. So you can make sure you really dive into the fashion foundation conversation and nail it. And do you, boo, if you like it, wear it. That's the only rule you need to follow. I'll see you on the flip side.